the Americans need to understand that the election of Donald Trump very much is related to and has its equivalent in the Brexit vote in the UK. The establishment, the progressivists, the globalists did not expect to lose in both cases, and they did. And in both cases, they're kicking up a storm. <clears throat> Theresa May is unfortunate. There was a woman who was a believer who would have been a much better prime minister. Her name was I believe, Angela Lederer. She should have gotten the job because she was pro-Brexit. So was Boris Johnson, the former mayor of London, who is now a member of the British cabinet as foreign minister. And he's a native New Yorker. He was born in New York City, actually. Um, both of them were contenders to be the prime minister in place of uh, David Cameron, who was a very unfortunate individual, who was, again, one of those people who wanted Britain to be an offshore colony ruled from Brussels by unelected socialist bureaucrats. In any event, in a slap to the face to the democratic will expressed at the ballot box by the British people, the British establishment forced in Theresa May who was pro-Remain. She wanted Britain to stay in the EU. She is compelled to carry out the will of the people, but logically, you should have a pro-Brexit prime minister. She should not be in her job. And she's not a good prime minister. She voted against Israel, saying that the Wailing Wall, in effect, because it was on the eastern side of the 1967 ceasefire line is occupied territory. I don't like her. I don't respect her. I hope the Lord removes her. I don't have any regard for that woman at all. She should not be the Prime Minister. Ms. Lederer should have been, or, or Boris Johnson should have been, not her. But there she is. And she is moving forward. But she's doing so to a degree, at least grudgingly. She was pro remain now the British Supreme Court has ruled that the mandate of the people, of the government, to take Britain out of the EU is not legally adequate in itself. Parliament must vote that. <laughs> Parliament must vote that. Uh, so it's going to go into the Parliament. Both of the mainstream parties will be pro Brexit, and will vote the democratic will of the people. But you have other parties, like the Scottish Nationalist Party, where most people in Scotland were not pro-Brexit, and some other parties, like the dying Liberal Democratic Party and some other smaller parties, who are going to vote against Brexit. The battle is not over. There was a legal battle, now there's a parliamentary battle. Uh, Again, it's like in America. The establishment can't let go of the fact that Trump won. They wanted a recount. Then they wanted, uh, uh, then when the recount blew up in their face and they found out it was Trump who was benefiting from the recounts in Wisconsin and so forth, and that there was voter fraud in Detroit, more, more votes than there were voters in the Democratic precincts. Well, then they didn't want that. Then they went for the <clears throat> Electoral College vote in December, and they had all these had been, has been movie stars uh, and TV personalities uh, who don't have any other way to get their face on TV anymore. And then when that didn't work, now they're trying demonstrations and whatever they can do. The establishment just does not want to let go of the power. They can't accept the result of the election. Well, exactly what you see happening in America is what you see happening in Britain with Brexit. Exactly the same. Thank you so much for your question. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless. Blessings, dear friends. Greetings in Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and on our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth 
in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering a, a, a questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print through the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. First being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of Revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church, Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo, Harpezo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available in the Morio catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless, and Jesus be with you.